Sea region will lose out. The national picture is with a 25% down, quarter down. We're the third down in the Liverpool City region. There is no way that the people in the Liverpool City region are less talented than anywhere else in the country. So again, we'll reinforce the message of going down to London on Monday and we'll push forward again with our request for the government to work with us so that we can start to do some of the things that Ian's quite rightly teased out in that um, comprehensive, I think, uh, uh, presentation to us all. So um, with that, thanks very much. And we'll move on to item six. And Councillor Phil Davis is going to take us through the Strategic Investment Fund Assurance Framework um, because it needs to be um, approved by the Combined Authority. Uh, thanks, Steve. Uh, so this is the uh, updated assurance framework which we're bringing to the, uh, the CA today. We, we have to produce an assurance framework. Um, uh, government asks us to, to do this, to uh, explain how we're going to appraise, monitor and evaluate um, schemes that come forward. And basically this updated report does three things, Chair. First of all, it um, uh, brings up to date the uh, combined authority structure uh, and uh, operation to reflect the changes that we've, we've made in the organisation since 2016. Secondly, it updates the uh, CA's assurance practices and brings it, them into line with the new uh, uh, strategic investment strategy which you launched uh, a, a month or so ago, Chair. And then finally, it uh, provides uh, updates to bring our assurance framework within line with um, government guidance um, with around sectors and individual government departments. So uh, I think this is a, a really good document. I think it does provide uh, a now a robust basis for us appraising SIF funding, and I would just commend it to the CA for agreement. Thanks, Chair. Any questions for Councillor Davis? No, okay, can we agree the recommendations as set out on page nine, please? Um, seven is uh, a report which presents a full business case submission in relation to the uh, grown business visits and events, which includes um, awarding five hundred and seventy-two thousand eight hundred and thirty-three. It always makes me laugh. Eight hundred and thirty-three quid um, for the single investment fund to support um, the submission that's um, being presented to us, and um, I think. Phil Dave's going to take us through this again and then we can ask any questions at the end. Uh, thanks, um, thanks very much, Steve. So, uh, as you say, this is the, the full business case uh, for project around growing business uh, visits and events. This is an extremely important activity uh, for the, the, the city region. It's a, the visitor economy is a key, is a crucial uh, element of our um, uh, our growth plan and this is a proposal to uh, give us the best possible opportunity to increase the number of um, high quality conferences, uh, conventions etc that come into the city region and um, the, uh, the economic benefits of that I think are well demonstrated, well tested uh, and this is a, a proposal that will um, provide funding for the next three years to uh, uh, enable us to raise our game on that important activity. It also crucially provides some additional staffing support to each of the Liverpool and Sefton uh, Convention Bureau and to provide funding for uh, uh, funding new conferences uh, in their convention centres. And, and those two bodies act as almost a kind of clearinghouse for the whole city region. Um, and um, uh, everybody hopefully will, will benefit from that additional activity. The, the prize, if you like, um, uh, for, through this project is we think uh, uh, somewhere in the benefit of about uh, in the region of about 11 million pounds in terms of economic benefit to the city region uh, through this particular activity. And I just want to um, pay pay tribute really to the work of the LEP in uh, helping to us to to, uh, to get this. Um, this whole area of work, um, uh, you know, onto a, a really uh, strong footing. The big challenge, I think, that is part of this business case is working with our private sector colleagues to get them to step up to the plate so that at the end of the three years, this activity hopefully be, can be private sector led 
and put on a sustainable fun, uh, footing for the future. But in essence, um, this is, I think, a good project, and I think we should we should support it. So I would uh, ask the CA to agree the recommendations in the report. Any questions for Phil? See, um, just to reiterate what Phil said, I think I think the actual um, commercial model that's being proposed here will will help reduce the reliance on um, public sector funds in future events. So I think it's a, it's a great initiative. I think it's one that should be supported. And it's going to attract um, major conferences, international visitors to our city region, which will help our economic growth, not just in the short term, but the longer term sustainable as well. <coughs> and let's face it, the more people that we get here, the more people that will persuade of the arguments that the Liverpool city region really is going places. So there's the tangible, because it's measurable, but financially, but there's also those people who go back and, and um, perhaps dispel some of the misperceptions that many have of what happens here. I think the more people we get from down south to come here, the better. Mm -hmm. um, can we agree the recommendations as set out on page 61 in the report then? Eight, eight is the um, SIF again, but this is in regard to um, seeking approval on a full business case submission um, in relation to the access to the Holsney Garden Village project and the award of a maximum capital grant of £12,142,325p, now £25, um, from the single investment fund and um, I think Councillor Morgan, is, Councillor Dave is going to lead him on this and then you're going to take over. Yeah, okay, Phil? Yeah, well really j just because because the, it comes under my portfolio, but I just want to introduce this to say, you know, this is a um, this is a key project for the city region. Um, clearly, the, the Halstead site is only one of a handful of national sites to be awarded garden village status. Um, major opportunities around housing, employment, and the SIF funding uh, is uh, fo being focusing being focused on the, the kind of infrastructure that needs to go with all that. But I think this is exactly the kind of project that will be transformational, and, and I think it's one that the CA should be getting behind. But I don't want to steal Graham's thunder, so I'll, uh, at this stage, hand over to Graham, who, who I'm sure will, will give a lot more detail around the project. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Phil. Um, this funding will be vital in kickstarting the excitement house near Garden Village developments in Nosley. Our ambition is to create a unique garden village providing high quality housing and employment alongside a new country park. Housley Garden Village will bring in 1,600 high quality and distinctive new homes to this local city region. It's just one of three new garden villages in the northwest and will put Knowsley and the wider city region at the forefront of housing delivery in the country. Housley will form a new gateway to the Liverpool City region for both residents and businesses. Our ambitious scheme will deliver over 20 hectares of employment land, making it right for investment for employers, for employers and in create new jobs in growth sectors such as maritime and logistics. The allocation of funding will help make Alsney Garden Village a reality. The funding will improve access for developers who are eager to get onto the sites and start work. It will also strengthen the surrounding highway network for people living and working nearby, both now and for the future. Housley Garden Village will give us a new, unique opportunity to create a new place, a place that will become home to thousands of residents, a place that will employ hundreds of people, a place that will make a major contribution towards the future of Nosley and the Liverpool City region. I welcome the recommendation in today's reports, Chair. Thank you. Okay, can we agree the recommendations as set out on uh, the... Mr. Mr. Mayor? Uh, sorry, no, to, just uh, thank you. Just uh, um, <clears throat> just in terms of uh, this Holsley Garden Village was agreed some time ago, so that this is actually about the infrastructure for the development, and I recognise the implications of this for both uh, the Nosey but also the St Helens area will increase the capacity within the, the highways uh, uh, system. So that's what will draw traffic towards the Tarbuck Island uh, uh, junction. So that's very much appreciated. Uh, obviously the whole thing developed itself in some years uh, to come. So I just ask Councillor Morgan that uh, 
um, the continued engagement between your authority and my authority in terms of the highways implications as the whole Zee village uh, unfolds. Yes, Jeff, thank you. And you know, it's a valid point that Council Long makes. It's, fact, it's really important that when the size of these developments that uh, each borough talks to each other uh, and works out each other's problems and we'll continue to liaise with St. Helens on a regular basis uh, leading up to the construction of the homes and the businesses. Thank you. With that assurance, um, can we agree recommendations are set out on page 97 of the report then? Three. Item 9 is um, another one of those housekeeping ones we get from time to time which is the acceptance of um, EU grants and extensions to existing program um, and Councillor Davis again I think it's uh, for you to start this. Yeah thanks uh, Steve so so this is a report which recommends that um, we accept and act as the accountable body for the European Regional Development Fund the RDF North West Local Energy Technical Assistance Project and that we make uh, an onward grant to the LEP where this um, project will be, be, be housed uh, to ensure that this um, is, is a success. So we, we will be one of five regional hubs, the Northwest Local Energy Hub um, in England. I think it gives us um, two years funding initially, but I think it's a great opportunity for us to do some really innovative um, local energy schemes uh, and particularly building on our reputation around low carbon uh, um, projects. So uh, I think this is, uh, for me, something we should definitely say yes to. Um, so that's the first part of the recommendation. And the paper is also recommending that we um, agree extensions to a couple of uh, well-established uh, ERDF-funded schemes. One is a uh, business support project and the other one is around a project called New Markets. Uh, so, so that's the other element of the, uh, the paper, and, and I would just ask the CA to agree those recommendations. Okay, and it is another example of the benefit of the LEP and the CA working together, and, and this is additional money uh, over and above what we would have got from the devolution agreement. Um, the EU grant itself is outlined on page, uh, sorry, table four of the report. So, can we agree the recommendations set out on page two one five, please? Ten is again, it's uh, uh, another um, funding issue. It's about something called transforming cities, and the report provides an update on the progress of. TF, TCF and um, Councillor Robinson is going to take us through this report. Yeah, that's absolutely right. It's a, a brief progress report on where we're up to with Transforming Cities Fund. As has been previously reported to the Combined Authority, the Transforming Cities Fund is an allocating pot of money that government have given to us. I'm not going to call it new money because it's just a pot of money that hasn't been taken away from us, but because we are a mayoral combined authority, it's a pot that's been allocated to us that we haven't had to bid against other authorities for. Uh, originally we were allocated from some £34 million, pounds, but in the latest budget we were given another £38.5 million, so more than £170 million pounds of funding uh, that we have for this. Previously we've identified a number of specific themes in how we wish to uh, allocate this, uh, particularly on further improving the attractiveness of public transport, maximising the potential of the brand new rolling stock that will be coming to the Mersey Rail Network, and significantly improving some of our key bus corridors to make buses more attractive, particularly vis-a-vis -vis the private car. Um, and also as well focusing on health and wellbeing, getting more people travelling sustainably, either on bike or by foot. So in previous reports we've obviously brought forward and commissioned uh, some of this funding to go towards refreshing our smart ticketing uh, offer to make sort of ticketing and fares much more attractive and easier for passengers to use. Obviously we'll be using some of this funding towards the brand new Mersey ferry that we've already begun the procurement for before Christmas and we've used some of this money to uh, match fund some of the ERDF funding that we'd allocated towards uh, the basis of a site called Superhighway Network across the city region. Uh, at a future report coming forward in the next month, we'll be uh, bringing forward some of the development funding for this year's 
projects and some of the areas that we're going to be looking at further are those uh, transforming of bus corridors, uh, looking at how we can go even further with the cycling and walking network and extending that to a further six corridors, looking at a number of different mass uh, transit options uh, and also potentially looking at some hydrogen fueling options as well. And further in time, there are a number of other emerging uh, projects that we're investigating, including uh, some form of link between Liverpool South Parkway and John Lennon Airport, further opportunities around the evolution of infrastructure on the Mersey Rail Network, uh, how we can also look at digital railway technology to further improve uh, efficiency and journey times and reliability on the rail network, and also the potential of an urban traffic control centre for the whole of the city region to improve the efficiency of the wider highway network and how traffic signal works across the, the region. So it's a basic uh, and simple, straightforward progress update and further reports will be coming forward at future meetings. Any questions for Liam? Um, just to reiterate, uh, I think it's a very valid point that has been raised by Liam. Um, we didn't have to bid in for this, but even when you add up all the bits that we've got, it comes to nowhere near the amount of money that we've been uh, taking away from the six local authorities uh, cumulatively. But it is an opportunity to push forward with truly transformational projects in regard to transport. And uh, that alongside the request, I'm sure, from the local authorities to sort out potholes and all that sort of stuff, it's, it's totally separate. We, we need to, uh, to be look at where we can get innovation and there's a load of ideas that are floating around and that's why in the future we'll keep on bringing this back to the command authority so that everybody can be made aware of just how um, innovative I suppose the, the um, people in the Liverpool City region are when they get the opportunity. Okay, with that said, can we agree the recommendations are set out on page and um, two to one of the report, please. Item 11 is about looking forward to the year of the environment 2019. And you may recall that the August meeting, the combined authority gave approval to support and participate in the year of the environment this year. And this report provides an update on the key themes and the activities which are being coordinated across the city region during 2019. And initially, Kirsty is going to take us through this, but um, Gideon, I nearly called you councillor, and Gideon, that was me for some time. Um, <laughs> Gideon bent over and is going to um, follow on from Kirsty. Thank you. So, uh, just by way of introduction, uh, as you said, uh, 2019 is the year of the environment. This is being championed and steered locally uh, by Nature Connected and also by Gideon um, as the Mayor's Advisor on the Natural Environment. Uh, it was agreed uh, last August to support this initiative and it does align fully um, with our ambitions around a clean, inclusive, sustainable and low uh, carbon city region. It's an ideal opportunity to work in partnership um, and to showcase our natural assets uh, but also to celebrate a lot of the valuable work that's already been done. Um, it's also though an opportunity to raise awareness of issues which do need to be tackled, for example around air quality. Uh, we will update the combined authority as the year progresses, but we'll also update at the end of the year as well. First of all, uh, many thanks, Chair, for your personal support for the year. I'd just like to say a couple of words about the partners involved in the year and some of the activities that are planned for the year. Uh, you'll have a brochure in front of you. I hope you have a chance to read that later on. Um, to say, first of all, there's a really very wide-ranging partnership already developed um, around the year. Our six local authorities, I'm delighted, are all engaged at various levels. The Mersey Travel, the Waste Authority, the LEP, uh, discussions and activities are being planned and being discussed. We have a very good range of environmental bodies involved, a lot of expertise and a lot of voluntary commitment as well. Uh, a number of private sector partners are involved. Uh, and uh, the um, chambers.